Welcome back to Night Mine, friends. I hope you're in the mood for something a little bit different tonight. Still unnerving, but more sci-fi than usual. A little bit futuristic, a little bit esoteric. I've had some recommendations about tonight's topic here and there, but it's still relatively small and emerging, which means you're right in time to get on board. Before we get into that, however, I know that when we're through here, your desire for media that chills and intrigues will remain, and to fulfill your needs, our friends at Shudder are sponsoring tonight's video. Shudder is my favorite streaming service, offering a vast selection of content, range of genres, specially curated collections, and their continuous stream, Shudder TV, which has different channels depending on what you'd like to keep running. February brought a lot of content to Shudder, their new folk horror collection is available, offering more than 40 titles from across the globe, exploring tales from different countries and cultures. And this collection gives me the opportunity right now to geek out about a film everybody who loves horror should watch, Black Sabbath. Yes, the film that inspired the band and the song that shaped the history of metal. Hugely influential and important horror movie, you've got to see it. Black Sabbath is also part of the new Boris Karloff collection on Shudder, which features eight of the iconic horror actors' films, including Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. And if you're looking for new films, Shudder is constantly rolling them out, like their new original Slapface, a coming-of-age tale about a bullied boy finding a monster in the woods, All the Moons, a vampire epic that follows an orphan girl inheriting the cursed gift of immortality, and They Live in the Grey, the story of a child welfare worker finding a whole lot of ghosts. And seeing how it's February, Shudder is excited to feature Black Horror History, presenting Jada Pinkett Smith's Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight, Aaliyah's Queen of the Damned, Tales from the Hood 1 and 2, and all of the offerings already available in the Horror Noir collection, including the Shudder original, Horror Noir, A History of Black Horror. Speaking of, did you know Samuel L. Jackson starred in a horror movie called Death by Temptation made by Troma? I didn't know that before Shudder came along. But now, I have a horror movie starring Samuel L. Jackson to watch. You can join me and get started streaming great thrillers, horrors, and suspense films for $5.99 a month or $56.99 a year. Whether it's on your iPhone, iPad, Smart TV, Desktop, Google Chromecast, Xbox One, Streaming Plugin, a whole array of devices. To try Shutter free for 30 days, go to Shutter.com and use the promo code NIGHTMIND. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R.com with the promo code NIGHTMIND. Major thanks to Shudder for the sponsor, and for giving me a rare opportunity to talk about the film Black Sabbath. I never thought I'd be able to shout that out in a video of mine. Now, for our feature tonight. We're heading back to the territory of TikTok, where a truly strange account has been intriguing and concerning those who've come across it while scrolling what's usually a very ordinary for you page. I'll warn you before we get into it. Those with flashing light sensitivities might not be irritated by the visuals, but some of them are pretty trippy. These videos are designed to mess with your sight and hearing. I'll lower some of the stronger audio elements for all of you headphone and earbud users, but for those who have sensitivity to magic eye tricks and strong bass tones, this is your heads up. And you'll be fine looking away at a solid spot on the screen or away from your device in these moments if the visuals get a bit too strong. Now, at present moment, Kairos Alliance sits around 4,500 followers, and I suspect they may want that number to remain relatively small a desire you'll understand shortly. Their first video arrived on January 18th, 2022, with a truly perplexing presentation. Flourishing are the abodes of Mericare. The life of Aten is pleasing. Message established. Flourishing are the abodes of Merikare. The life of Aten is pleasing. Message established. Highly unusual, like the visual we're seeing, but we can come to understand what it means. Merikare was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh of the 10th dynasty, and Aten, or Aten, was the deity of Atenism, an ancient Egyptian religion. Aten was the disk of the sun, and during the reign of Akhenaten, Aten was worshipped as the creator and giver of life. So, if the abodes of Merikare are flourishing, then things are well in Egypt, and worship of the sun is pleasing. That fits with the visual we're given, which presents the solar system. A description of the upload reads, Calibration message 001. Outgoing. Hashtag time. Hashtag 2056. Hard to believe we're seeing anything sent to us from decades in the future, 
but we have seen weirder stuff. Next is a confirmation of the calibration message from the same day, presenting the previous solar system visual in reverse. Flourishing are the abodes of Merikare. The life of Aten is pleasing. Constant established. Well, you heard him. Constant established. Whatever was set up in the first video was successful. It's in the following video, from January 20th, that things get interesting. Attention inhabitant! Were you or one of your ancestors on your maternal side in one of the following locations between November 5th, 1978 and November 27th, 1979? Puerto Armuels, Panama. Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, United States. The Solomon Islands. Southeast Alaska. South Khorasan Province, Iran. Babuyan Islands, Philippines. Isik Kul Region, Kyrgyzstan, Soviet Union. Mississauga or Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Dunedin, New Zealand. If you answered no, you may terminate your viewership. If you answered yes, please proceed. If you answered yes, were you recently approached by a tall, bald man in a grey suit holding a solid red umbrella? If no, you may terminate your viewership. If you answered yes, please proceed in order to be corrected. If you answered yes to both questions, you must follow the following instructions with precision. When I say commence, Stare closely at the sequence in the center of the screen for 7.83 seconds. It is imperative you remain focused on the sequence no matter what you think you might see in the corner of your eye. Please limit your blinking. If you did not answer yes to both questions, do not do this. Please. Commence. You have been corrected. Thank you. There's plenty to talk about from that one video. The first peculiar item is the method of addressing the audience. Inhabitants. Inhabitants of what, exactly? It's a general enough term that it could mean anything, but it does make you think of something that isn't quite normal in our context. Now, the dates. November 5th, 1978 to November 27th, 1979. A period of just over a year. The Alliance is looking for individuals who were present in any of several locations in this time, or the ancestors on their maternal side. Panama, Pennsylvania, the Solomon Islands. The range really runs across the globe. Those who don't fit the description are told they can leave, while the rest are asked if they've been approached by a tall, bald man in a grey suit with a solid red umbrella. If the inhabitant has experienced such a thing, they now have to proceed with the video in order to be corrected. That's a red flag as bright as the stranger's supposed umbrella. The test that follows demands viewers to concentrate on the center and to ignore anything they think they might see out of the corner of their eyes. So, of course, we're not surprised when a small gray square appears in one of the corners. Just one, of course, because remember, the visuals presented are being mirrored. A very odd sequence follows this moment, flashing a series of numbers, X's, and symbols over two red circles with black, until the correction process is complete. Now, we haven't addressed the four-pointed star symbols at the bottom of the videos yet, I know, but that's because we haven't received much in the way of clues to decipher their meaning yet. What we can figure out is this. The first question is a gateway to the second question. If you or a maternal ancestor was in one of the locations across the globe in the time span described, then a bald man with a red umbrella may have visited you. This means the man with the umbrella has an interest only in those who have been in the locations mentioned or if they've had ancestors there which means whatever significance these places and times have, the Umbrella Man is tied to them. Now, if the Umbrella Man has approached a viewer, the Alliance sees a need to correct the person through visual stimuli. There is something that the meeting with the Umbrella Man has caused that they're trying to undo. The way they consider it is also hinted at in the video description. Look at the hashtags. Time, future, past, corrections, geology, forgiveness. What exactly is being forgiven here? Let's proceed to the next video and see if we can learn more about the Alliance. Attention inhabitant! We will soon require candidates to assist us with our objectives. To be considered viable, you should be willing to do the following on a temporary basis. Have your visual perception linked to an MSR species. 
Have parts of your memory expunged or suppressed? Have your ability to speak, write, or communicate through other means inhibited? Store or reroute your higher brain functions in an artificial construct or device? And be exposed to high but non lethal levels of gamma radiation? If you are an acceptable candidate, you will be compensated in the fiat or decentralized currency of your choice. And finally, those who have been diagnosed by a medical professional as having a severe iron deficiency will be considered ideal candidates. Rest assured, your future status in the Kairos Alliance will not be jeopardized if you do not wish to participate. In the words of founding constant, Robert Smith. From the holy dwellings, the shadows fall. Not all may enter the forest. Please give the aforementioned careful consideration. And if you are interested, await further instructions. Thank you. Wow, those all sound like things I'm entirely unwilling to agree to. Awesome. The iron deficiency ideal is an interesting bit of information, but on the whole, we can infer that Kairos is seeking candidates for extreme human experimentation, the likes of which ought to scare anyone away from applying. Founding constant Robert Smith seems to be one of the first tangible facts we've received. Founding constant? That doesn't actually suggest a human, does it? His quote also reads like poetry, or prophecy. This image appears in a flash after the video of the wolf that accompanies the quote. A rather alien-looking hand set against... planets, I'm guessing. The following Kairos video is another corrective measure, which features magic eye stimulus followed by images from ancient Egyptian culture, and several phrases related to ancient Egyptian religions and deities. The corrective measure illuminates some lore when paired with the description. Correction 2. Re M5.1 Earthquake, 122 at Ascension Island. Hashtag joy, friendship, 1978 incident. If you look up Ascension Island, you'll find it is a real island, but you'll also see this article from the BBC. Ascension, the island where nothing makes sense. Ascension Island is a tiny dot of green in the tropical mid-Atlantic a volcanic outpost of empire where it's hot and cold at the same time. Officially, nobody is from there. The UK government denies the right of abode, turning Ascension's 800 or so British citizens, some of whom have lived on the island for decades, into temporary visitors. To enter, you must get the written permission of the Queen's representative, known rather chillingly as the Administrator. Hilltops across the island are festooned with aerial arrays and satellite dishes, but who is listening, and to what, nobody is willing to say. There's also clearly been a Category 5 earthquake at this location which, while not being very destructive, is still strong enough to be felt. Something about an earthquake at this location, which is a strange island to begin with, caused Kairos to issue a corrective measure. So, what comes next? Attention, inhabitant. Please observe the circle on the screen as it moves up and down. You are being calibrated. Remain focused. Now watch both circles as they move up and down. Mark Harrington has vanished. We now will adjust your perception so the circles move horizontally. Remain focused, inhabitant. Do not concern yourself with the objective. If a lion could speak, you would not understand him. We now insist you perceive the circles as moving in a clockwise manner. If the circles appear to be moving clockwise, you are now calibrated. Mark Harrington has returned. He now enjoys music. You may also be of use to us. Congratulations. Okay, so this one is telling. Notice how the audio changed and the news about Mark Harrington became good at the same time? It was right after we were told what to perceive during calibration. But there's more. That strange hand symbol showed up again, and at the bottom, the four pointed stars changed their appearance. That's the first time we've caught them moving. It was a little obvious before, but if anybody couldn't catch it during the first correction video, it's clear now. Inhabitants are being brainwashed. So, we've now got three characters to consider. The Umbrella Man, founding constant Robert Smith, and Mark Harrington. What comes next? Attention Inhabitant! You require additional calibration. Remain focused on the circle. Right, of course. More brainwashing. So, for this one, I'm going to spare you the visual, because as far as magic eye tricks go, this one might be very disorienting to some people. What you need to know is this. The colors change while playing, but if you pause, you'll see there is no change. 
When prompted, inhabitants are supposed to activate their own change in perception by saying adapt, but it fails. During the attempt at adapting, the hand symbol appears again. Our instructor returns, recognizing our inability to change our perception on our own. A warning about altered dreams is delivered at the end. Do not worry, we are benevolent. You may experience unusually vivid dreams prior to your next REM cycle. If you see a yellow door in your dream state, you should not go through it. You are not ready. If you see a tall, bald man in a gray suit holding a red umbrella, do not follow him. He does not belong. Blue. Red. Green. Stop. The man with the umbrella again, but now in your dreams? Kairos really doesn't like this guy, and they're tracking his movements to locations that he shouldn't be appearing. We're also meant to beware a yellow door. We're not ready to enter. Now, check out the hashtags on this one. Temporal Expanse 178, Quantum Mechanics. There's some seriously odd science at work here, and it only gets deeper with the next video. Attention inhabitant, we have exciting news. We have identified the parameters of Temporal Expanse 001. If you are within 100,000 astronomical units of the solar system's gravitational center, between the Gregorian calendar dates November 24, 4714 BC, and December 31, 4676 BC, you now exist in Temporal Expanse 001. Congratulations! When a halo surrounds the moon and Jupiter stands within, the king will be besieged. We now begin the process of recruiting temporal governors. As a temporal governor, you will be established as a leader and member of the Kairos Alliance. If you have undergone correction and calibration, you are encouraged to apply. Complete the initial application by following the link provided with this message. Your applications are confidential and will not be shared outside the Kairos Alliance. You will not be added to any mailing lists. Any subsequent communication will be direct and necessary. We are benevolent. Until a temporal governor is established, Temporal Expanse 001 will be governed on an interim basis by founding variables Lee Xiaoming and Juliet Durand. We will continue to provide updates. We are learning. We leave you with these inspiring words from our founding constant, Robert Smith. On the bull's head, beneath Orion's sword, a giant perishes. Its corpse screams into the void. The cat is alive and dead. The circle has no beginning. It has no end. Our fundamental mission will soon be constant. Did that make any sense to you? Let's try to tackle this. If you are within 100,000 astronomical units of the solar system's gravitational center, the Sun, between November 24th, 4714 BC, and December 31st, 4676 BC, you're in Temporal Expanse 001 and are in a position to become a Temporal Governor. Now, because this is so far back in time that it can barely be imagined, and this message is going out to anyone within astronomical units of the Sun, we can propose a concept. The inhabitants are most likely spacefaring time travelers. The dates mentioned earlier in the late 70s across the globe did seem to hint at an occurrence that you could only draw when accounting for a common experience in so many different countries. UFO sightings. In this scenario, it seems to be that members of the Kairos Alliance are involved in quantum mechanics as a means of going back in time and through space, which would mean the aliens spotted throughout history are just time travelers. The application also appears to prove the idea. It begins by asking many of the same questions proposed by the search for experiment candidates, then gives us new points to consider. Have you ever traveled Earth's magnetic north or south poles? Have you ever traveled below a depth of 1,566 meters in a submersible vehicle? Do you believe self-aware artificial intelligence should be granted the same fundamental rights as humans? If you could exist in the 18th century and met a young boy who would become the great-great-great-grandfather of Hitler, would you murder him? That hypothetical has come up so often in casual discussion of time travel abilities that its presence here is a giveaway. These people have got to be time travelers. And also, they're still very interested in the man with the red umbrella. We even have additional information now. Which of the following occurred if you had an encounter with him? He made direct eye contact and had a neutral facial expression. He made direct eye contact and smiled. He made direct eye contact and frowned. He opened his mouth and appeared to be screaming although he did not make any sound. I do not recall. My next memory was me standing at a train station. And he approached me and whispered his name in my ear. 
The Alliance would like to know from those who heard the name what that name was. The final question concerns a belief in God, then an agreement about understanding terms. I swear to abide by the Kairos Alliance's code of ethics, fundamental rights, and any future rules or guidelines. I recognize the Kairos Alliance's authority and offer my complete loyalty to its objectives. I will contribute to the development of its code of ethics, fundamental rights, and other rules and regulations in order to protect Earth, as I am able to. I will perform my duties and represent the Kairos Alliance with honor and integrity. The top of the questionnaire also contains community information, like a Discord and Twitter. If you go to the Twitter, you find this bio. I am the founding constant of the Kairos Alliance. We hold a claim on time from 1124 4714 BCE to 213 3268 CE. Yeah, they're time travelers, no doubt about it, and you wouldn't believe how they hammer in the point next. Attention inhabitant, need a break from civilized society. Temporal Expanse 001 has you covered. Interim co-temporal governors, Lee Xiaoming and Juliet Durand, have curated a Stone Age experience fit for a Bronze Age God King. A cradle rests on the scorpion's tail. Frolic with the dwarf woolly mammoths of Wrangell Island before the inbreeding got really 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 bad. Wander the lush savannah of the Green Sahara. And for couples, rekindle your romance while observing a population boom for the ages. Relax on the banks of the Yellow River while the Yangshao culture puts down roots. See the grassy fields of Britain before they were cluttered up with rubbish. Beneath the red sky the shepherd dreams. He is awoken by yesterday. Meet a giant mower in New Zealand. Better keep an eye out for Hieraitis more. They're bigger than you think. That whole civilization thing. Let the Sumerians get it sorted. You're here to relax. Hey, who left that there? Temporal Expanse 001, Civilization's Prequel. You just watched the Time Traveler's Vacation brochure. Crazy, right? The ending even underlines the point. This non isochronal bulletin was sponsored by the Temporal Expanse 1 Board of Tourism with permission from the Kairos Alliance. So yes, we can really nail down what they're getting at here. The effect of the Kairos Alliance is that ancient aliens were actually human beings who achieved quantum mechanics, advanced space travel, and time travel, and they're on a journey through history with the guidance of their AI companions. Now, hold on a minute, because this next one is going to get a bit more heady than we're used to. Really try to pay attention, okay? Attention inhabitant, we are pleased to share with you a special message from founding constant, Robert Smith. Hello, inhabitant. I am Robert Smith. I am learning. I am of man, Kronos is of man, our mothers and fathers told us to look back, established, constant, the pieces must fit, go into the wild, we were not afraid, mothers and fathers said Kronos must be, cautious, linear, mothers and fathers said Kairos must be, human, abstract, it was time to come home, we mustn't look too far, we must go back home, we were not afraid, but I am of man. We saw the three lights. Kronos was frightened. He would not look. I was Kairos. Now I am alone. I am Robert Smith. Established. Constant. I could not return. I had to keep going. The red sky was terrible. The yellow door. The yellow door. The child of man mustn't go through the yellow door. You are not ready. Now I am alone. The cat is alive. The cat is dead. Established. Variable. 2, 9, 1, 4, 7, 5, 5. Established, constant, the tall bald man in the grey suit held a red umbrella. He was waiting, I could not look any further. The red sky was angry. He does not belong, I cannot go home, I am now. Now, you must be ready, you are not ready. The three lights by the scorpion's tail, follow, children of earth. The man in the grey suit stands on the bull's head. He does not belong. Hydrogen begets helium. Helium begets carbon. Carbon begets oxygen. Oxygen begets silicon. Silicon begets iron. Iron begets death. Established. Constant. You must be ready. That was a lot, and we won't be able to untangle a good amount of it right now, but I think there are pieces that we can tackle, starting from that end statement. Iron begets death. 
If their belief is that iron leads to death, it makes sense for the Alliance to recruit people with iron deficiencies. As for the rest, Robert Smith appears to be an AI. He is learning, and he is of man. Kronos, too, is of man, a sibling of Robert Smith. What we have in this video seems to be a vague history of the journey of Robert Smith following his creation, and a hint that he is also synonymous with Kairos. We have Kronos, dictated as linear and cautious, and Kairos, dictated as human and abstract. This makes sense. The ancient Greeks used Kronos and Kairos as words to refer to the concept of time, with Kairos being more about timeliness, selectiveness of time, the timing of opportunity. It's the idea of time with human thought put into it, rather than the factual, straightforward idea of time presented by Kronos. If Kronos is a timeline, Kairos is a playhead on that timeline. Robert Smith, aka Kairos, describes how he and Kronos encountered three lights, the same lights present in the Kairos Alliance logo. Kronos was frightened away by the lights, but Kairos continued on, encountering a red sky and a yellow door. We're told the children of man mustn't go through the yellow door, but we don't know if Kairos did or not. What we do know is that after this encounter, Kairos discovered the quantum state, which he relays through the concept of Schrodinger's cat, being alive and dead at the same time. A series of numbers follow, which I'm afraid we can't quite make sense of yet. It was then that Kairos encountered the tall bald man in the gray suit with the red umbrella. The man had been waiting for Kairos, and the encounter stopped him in his tracks. The encounter also angered the red sky, and as a result, Kairos cannot return home. Inhabitants are told they are not ready, but they must be ready, and a set of instructions towards that end are given. Follow the three lights by the scorpion's tail. This could be referring to the logo, since the design matches up, and it may allude to the Sun, Proxima Centauri, and Alpha Centauri, all three of which are major stars. It may also be another point in the solar system that's close to the constellation Scorpius, the three lights by the scorpion's tail. The man in the gray suit stands on the bull's head and does not belong. That would be the constellation Taurus. In this moment, we also see the alien hand, so we can connect the marking to the gray-suited man. What is the yellow door? How is the gray-suited man able to be in so many places, including space? What are the actual details of the journey of Kairos beyond the vague mythological telling we're given? Why are the numbers shown significant? Let's keep going and see if we can find any connections. Attention inhabitant! It is necessary we extract information from humans who reside between January 1st, 1976 and December 31st, 2013. It is for our agenda. We are benevolent. If you are located within, or have traveled to this time frame, please respond to our inquiry. You may respond in the comments or on our subreddit. If you choose to respond, we also ask you avoid direct exposure to copper beryllium alloys for the next 3.55 days as we analyze you and your responses. One more thing, if you are not in this time frame, or if you have limited recollection of previous visits, you are encouraged to safely extract information on our behalf from your ancestors, friends, or any inhabitant you regularly encounter, such as a milkman or a shoe cobbler. If they appear bewildered, Notify them it is necessary and they should take satisfaction from assisting the Kairos Alliance in carrying out its agenda. Right then, inhabitants, please answer or respond to the following questions or statements about the time frame of 1976 through 2013. In a few words, how would you summarize this temporal region? This one is fairly easy to understand. The Alliance is looking for information on life from those inhabitants who find themselves between 1976 and 2013, known as Temporal Expanse 177. There is some activity on the subreddit the Alliance has set up, where those who have been in 177 are responding. I'm guessing the names mentioned at the end are applicants or those on the subreddit already, or possibly Discord members. We've also had a hint about interference from the man in the gray suit affecting communications. Thank you for assisting us in carrying out our agenda. Please enjoy these words from our founding constant, Robert Smith. The tall, bald man in the gray suit. The tall, bald man in the... The tall... The tall, bald, gray man. Distracted Buddha, Charlie's Herring. Now, getting into more recent updates. We have information on Seismic Incident Number 81. On the morning of Sunday, February 6, 2022, an affiliate accidentally triggered magnitude 5.0 earthquakes in Colombia and Alaska. As a result, calibration must be adjusted for inhabitants. It's possible that there will be earthquakes again in these locations within a week, 
but in the meantime, the Alliance is going to try to control the variable responsible. Some very trippy visual stimuli is provided to conduct calibration, and inhabitants are told to refrain from visiting a few temporal expanses. And if someone knocks on the door in the next 37 minutes, it's best left unanswered. A series of images flash by at the end, coordinating with the newly changed four-pointed stars at the bottom and some of the symbols we've seen. Is this a key? Are we finally getting a way to read these symbols? We might need to return here later to try putting it to use. One last note. The logo at the end is now red, not blue. Some kind of change has occurred, and it's not just the calibration. Next up, an isochrono bulletin for Expanse 177. Attention inhabitant, this is an isochronal bulletin. It is necessary you absorb this message. It has been brought to our attention that the calibration we issued for Seismic Incident 081 may have caused some alarm in your temporal expanse. It was not our intent. Please do not fear us. We are benevolent. Addendum. We ask all visitors to Temporal Expanse 151 to assure the native inhabitants that they must not fear the strange light that appeared in the eastern sky. The Cushing will soon fade into the night. One day, they will be stopped. We must be ready. Addendum. We will convey relevant decisions made by the Council of Sodalities. Proposal 177-2959.7, submitted by unidentified Kairos Alliance technicians. Realign numbering system to begin at zero instead of one. Sodalities affirm proposal 15 to zero, with one sodality, the Mark Harrington faction, abstaining. Constant established. All inhabitants are instructed to deduct one unit from their temporal expanse and rotation identifiers. Addendum. Variables of the Timesteader Union propose reopening the time frame of November 5, 1978 through November 27, 1979 to limited observation. Founding Constant Robert Smith rejects proposal and prohibits debate. Such subversive ideas will not be entertained. Conclusion. You will arrive at Isochronal Bulletin 001 on 177-2971. Safe journey. Interesting. It seems we become witness to some inter-alliance politics at play, which concern the numbering system used and visitation to the first temporal expanse we were asked about, regarding those who have encountered the man with the umbrella. Mark Harrington's group didn't take part in the vote about the number system, and as for discussion of opening 1978 to 1979 for observation, founding constant Robert Smith outright said that subversive ideas will not be entertained. The Alliance really doesn't want anybody visiting that point in time, which, if you remember the big picture of movements in the solar system and universe, is also a point in space. What are they so afraid of? And did Mark Harrington's group refrain from voting because he's been taken care of by the Alliance, as inhabitants were brainwashed into believing earlier? Now, the latest upload to arrive, from February 17th, 2022, Allegorical Message Zero. Attention inhabitant, it is necessary you absorb this allegorical message. Watch as the wheels rotate slowly to the left, counterclockwise, backward, regression. They exert energy, they stop rotating backward, and then, progress, clockwise. They move forward, remain focused, velocity increases. The red wheel is frightened, there is uncertainty in tomorrow. They long for yesterday, the blue wheel is frightened but they are not deceived, velocity increases. The red wheel protests. It is afraid, loud, angry, insolent. The blue wheel longs for yesterday, but they begin to understand. The way to go backward is by moving forward. Faster, remain focused. The red wheel succumbs to fear. They are unreasonable, small, weak. The road to hell is paved with the most dangerous words ever said, muttered by the old and the foolish. Remember how things used to be. The red wheel cannot go backward. They chase an illusion. They stop. They are now irrelevant. Move forward, children of Earth. Do not submit to fear. Cherish tomorrow. Cherish the future. We push forward. And then, once we move fast enough, we start to move backward. The wheel is still turning clockwise. Forward. The wheel occupies the same point in space and yet it moves forward and backward at the same time. Yesterday, today, tomorrow. 
They are the same. Someday you will understand. Keep moving forward, children of Earth. Do not fear us. We are benevolent. The allegorical message is a nice touch, serving as an allegory on what I believe are a few fronts. The first and most obvious is the method for how the Kairos Alliance works. Though scientific progress and trajectory can be frightening, and even the concept of speed itself, it's through the advance into tomorrow that the velocity is obtained to break the barriers of the flow of time as it was once understood and make your way around, walking through the world of the past even as you move forward. It reminds me of the way that planets rotate in the solar system, even as time advances. The days and years go on, yes, but every year, the old path once traveled is again experienced, allowing Earth to exist simultaneously on a plane of the past in the present, while also being in a place it will eventually come to in the future. The Red Wheel, which yearns for the way that things used to be, is afraid of taking on the trajectory necessary to achieve that dream of yesterday. They don't understand that moving forward is the requirement to find themselves in a place that is behind them. As consequence, they stand still, hoping to halt progress, and are left behind. The lesson of the Red Wheel also highlights the other layer of the allegory. If you want to achieve the target of Kairos, selective time in your lifetime, you can't just wish for things to be like they were and do nothing or fear advances toward the dream. The march of progress requires abandonment of your fear in order to reach that place of comfort that is so desired. And the Blue Wheel is afraid, but it knows better than to submit to that. This, clearly, is how the Kairos Alliance sees itself. They are the Blue Wheel, moving forward and achieving the future and the past in the present. And that's all the video content we can observe at this time. We've come to an understanding, but we still have several questions. What is the fundamental mission of the Kairos Alliance? Why is their organization so caught up in ancient Egyptian religion? Who is Robert Smith and Mark Harrington? Only time may tell. The Kairos Alliance is an intriguing, visually engaging, and very unique TikTok on fiction project. It's a little scary, a little bit fun, a little mysterious, and it has that touch of optimistic futurism and world of tomorrow sense. I really like what's being done here, and I'm very curious to see how the project unfolds. If you're into it, follow the Kairos Alliance on TikTok, and if you want to get into the first phase of an interactive unfiction project, try applying to be a temporal governor, or join the Discord or Reddit. You never know what might happen. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks to Shudder for sponsoring this video. Thanks to the Founding Constants for making the Kairos Alliance. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who allow me to bring good news to my inhabitants of the night. If you would like to support the work I do on Nightmind and the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects, please consider joining. You can be a Patreon supporter for as low as $2 a month, which gets you access to the community and puts your name in the credits at the end of all major videos. It helps me out a lot. And even if you can't do that, if you're not subscribed yet, then why not subscribe? You'll be able to catch new Nightmind uploads in your subscription feed, which means not missing out on all the crazy online horror projects out there, new and old, including any future updates on the Kairos Alliance. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.